Hey everyone, Steve Robinson here. It is workshop three, and this is week two of workshop three. And question for you, boys and girls, do you remember what the key to focus on is in workshop three? If you're following along in your training manual, you will remember that the key to focus on is the golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. So I don't know if you can see that from where you are, but there's Robbie Soros. He says it right here on the board, whiteboard. The golden rule, treat each other the way you would like to be treated. So here's the deal. In workshop three, for this six to eight week block of material, the bully's gonna be behind you. Last week we focused on a catch dance back kick. We're gonna continue with that theme today and we're gonna be working on proper form and proper timing. Proper form and proper timing are two building blocks to make to pull us all together. You have to have good form, you have to have good timing, that's at the bottom of the pyramid. The next layer is to explode to the target. The next layer is to rotate your body and then the final layer of the pyramid is to attack the target. Let me get a poster here. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> so right here is proper form. If Hey, by the way, you don't have to have proper form and proper timing to be able to protect yourself against a bully. Number two. You don't have to be a black belt in karate to be able to protect yourself against the bully. Let me say those two things again, real important. You don't have to have great form, making sure your wrist is flat, or making sure your hand is completely open on a web hand that goes to the throat. You don't have to have great form, and you don't have to have great timing to be able to protect yourself against the bully. You have to be, and it sounds, it sounds kind of mean, but you have to be aggressive and you have to attack the target, okay? With that being said, if you want to be a quality, kid-friendly black belt, your form, okay, your wrist should be flat when you throw the punch, your form should be spot on if you want to be a quality, kid-friendly black belt, okay? Your back, your body posture should be straight up, not leaning in certain situations. So great form and great timing are at the bottom of the pyramid. These are the two building blocks. You want to be a quality black belt? Okay, you have to have great form and great timing. From there, you explode to the target. Why must you explode to the target? Another way of saying that is you have to go fast. You have to go at 30, 40, 50 miles per hour when you hit the bag. You have to go as fast as you can when you strike the target. Why do you have to go as fast as you can? The reason is because the faster you move, the more power you create, okay? And then, the third layer, it says rotate your body, okay? Not all of the 49 moves that we teach have body rotation. Not all of the 49 moves that we teach have body rotation. Example, cat stands front kick. It doesn't have body rotation. But if the move, <clears throat> the particular move incorporates body rotation, you're gonna go from getting this much power to rotating your body and getting even more power, okay? So body rotation, spinning if you will, gives you more power. But remember, not all martial arts moves have body rotation in them, okay? And then finally at the top of the pyramid, it says attack the target. Okay, give me an example. If you want to break a board, you cannot go slow. You have to, you have to attack that board. <laughs> and not just hit the board, but go through the board. In this case, aim for the red mat. Okay? So, we're going to continue with the idea of a cat stance back kick today. Working on the two bottom building blocks, which is proper form and proper timing. Okay? Please watch the back kick. My knees are bent, I'm leaning, my guard is up. This is good form, or to the best of my ability. If I'm straight, if my knees are straight, 
My hands are in my pockets. Bad form. Okay? So, talking about proper form, the knees need to be bent. Why? You want your body weight to the balls of your feet. Not back by your heels, but to the balls of your feet. Okay? You have to lean a little bit in the opposite direction that you're kicking. So, if I'm kicking that way, I have to lean that way. Okay? All about proper form. Hands below your chin to help your balance. Hands below your chin, as you know, to protect your body. All right, knee doesn't move, you chamber your heel. Knee doesn't move, you chamber your heel. And as you chamber your heel, watch my toes. Don't point them. You don't want to hit with your toes, you want to hit with your heel. Pull your heel back, I'm sorry, pull your toes, excuse me, pull your toes back. Wrap your toes up towards your shin, okay? So, cat stance back kick, it is a power move. Starting your cat stance, don't allow your knee to move. Whatever leg you're using right now, it doesn't matter. I'm using my left leg, I want to be looking over my left shoulder. Left shoulder, wow. Left shoulder, okay? So my guard is up, all right? Just chamber or lift your heel, pulling your toes up towards your shin. Let's do it again. Good. Don't move that knee. Lift or chamber your heel. All right. Now, as you chamber your heel, we're going to thrust the kick. Straighten that kick all the way out. Ah! And then return to your cat stance. Don't be spinning around and coming in this, this lazy stance. I want you to start with good form. And I challenge you to end with good form. Okay? You want to be a quality kid from the black belt? Form is critical, okay? Knees are bent, lean, put your guard up. You ready? We're gonna kick and return right back to this cat stance with great body control. Two, three, kick. Ah! Two, three, kick. Ah! Good, I kinda of bounced around a little bit. I had to regain my balance. But my goal was to get back to that cat stance. Okay? You ready? Got more. Two, three, kick. Ah! One more. Two, three, kick. Ah! Good. All right, switch legs this time. Working on form and technique. You're in your cat stance. Do you want to have your legs straight? Do you want to have your knees straight? Or do you want to bend your knees? I hope you said bend your knees. When you bend your knees, does your body weight goes? Does your body weight go back on your heels or to the balls of your feet? I hope you said the balls of the feet. Okay, knees bent, lean. You lean that way so you can kick them in the belly, so you can kick waist level. If you keep your back straight, it's hard to get your leg unless you're really flexible. It's hard to get your leg to go waist level. <coughs> so. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're in your cat stance. Your knees are bent. Weight is to the balls of your feet. Lean. Put your guard up. Right leg I'm kicking with. I'm looking over my right shoulder. Whatever leg you're kicking with. You're kicking with your right leg. Look over your right shoulder. I didn't say twist your shoulders because then your kick goes in the wrong direction and you kill the power. All you have to do is get a little bit of an idea of where the attacker is. Do not twist your shoulders when you kick. Your shoulders should remain stationary. Your hips should remain stationary as you kick. If you do that, if you allow your shoulders and the hips to rotate and, and shift, it, it, it's bad form. We're talking about proper form, okay? So let's go ahead and throw the cat stance back kick. We'll throw three to five kicks, all right? So knees are bent. Lean. So what part of the foot are you supposed to be kicking with? The, 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 the toes or the heel? The heel. That's the only part of the foot you should throw the back kick with. The only part of the foot you should throw the back kick with is the heel. And I say that because, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent here. When you throw a front kick, you don't only have to hit with the instep part of the foot. You can hit with the ball of the foot or the instep part of the foot on the front kick. You have options. There are no options. There are zero options when you throw the back kick. You must hit, you must hit with the heel part of the foot. If you hit with your toes, it's going to hurt. Okay? 
All right, what are we talking about right now? We're talking about proper form, proper timing, being a quality kid-friendly black belt, okay? You don't have to be a black belt. You don't have to have great quality to protect yourself against the bully. You have to attack the target and hit him hard, okay? That's the bottom line. But, but we're talking about being a quality, kid-friendly black belt. So, you're in your cat stance. Lean. All right, you ready? Three to five kicks. One. Ah! And, and I just want to point out that I'm not kicking the bag right now. If you don't have a bag to kick at home, you can still practice karate. If you don't have a lot of space at home, you know, we're doing this in an 8 by 8 area, if you will, 10 by 10 area, you don't need a lot of space, okay? You can practice this program without equipment, karate bags, if you will, hand, hand mitts, handbags. You can practice this, this program without a lot of space, 8 by 8, 10 by 10, okay? And you'll be getting great shape doing this as you find out on Workout Wednesdays with instructor Sam, and he puts you through your paces. I'm gonna shut up, we're gonna get back to your back kick, okay? So your knees are bent, your guard is up, kick. Ah, good. Three, ah, good. Four, ah, one more. Hit him in the belly, hit waist level, five. Ah, notice I made an effort not to pop up, okay? I used this example last week. Here's the deal, if you pop up, and we're talking about form, you can miss the target. If the target is the black door, if the target is the black door, I'm about three feet away from it, it's, it's hard to see it at your angle, but now watch. From here, I can hit the door. Boom, I missed it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. From here, I can hit the door. You heard it. From here, I can hit the door. Now, here's the key. I'm not getting any closer to that door. I'm not getting any farther away. If I start in the same exact same spot and throw this kick and have improper form, or if I straighten my body, I miss the target. So that's not good form. If my knees stay bent, I hit the door. If my knees straighten, I can miss the door. That's why we're really focusing on proper form, okay? Now, earlier, a few minutes ago, I said anytime you can rotate your body, you get more power. The cast stance back kick does not incorporate body rotation. Next week, when you come back from Martial Arts Monday, the bullies, even though the back kick is part of uh, Workshop 3 when the bully's behind you, we're going to start it as if the bully's to the side of you. We're going to rotate our body. Okay? So when you throw a spinning back kick, the bully doesn't start behind you. <clears throat> Excuse me. The bully starts to the side of you. Your knees are bent. There's the form. There's the proper form. And you rotate your body. And then you throw the kick. So a cat stands back kick today, let's just say, gives you this much power. Next week, when we practice a spinning back kick, you're going to get a lot more power. And my question to you is, why in a spinning back kick do you get more power? Answer, because you rotate your body. Hey, kiddos, join instructor Sammy for a workout Wednesday. Again, he's going to put you through your paces. He's going to make you sweat a little bit, release some energy, get in better shape. Strengthen the leg muscles, strengthen the upper body muscles. You're doing a great job. We'll see you next week, everyone. Thank you.